Ooh la la, check out the new background. Oh, it's gonna be it's like smudges on there. It's to lower cognitive load. This is all for you. All right, Aaron here today with another Only Life Important Shoe Review. We're doing the New Balance Minimus 10 V1s. Probably the best shoe I've ever had. I've said it more than once, and I'm gonna say it again, the New Balance Minimus 10 V1 Trail is the best shoe that I have ever had the pleasure of wearing. So a few times in the life of a runner, he or she finds a shoe that fits their foot perfectly. And then more than likely that shoe gets discontinued, never to be seen again. Damn it! Damn it! And even rarer is when one of those shoes gets brought back due to popular demand. They have resurrected it from the dead. Today I get to review the New Balance Minimus 10v1 Trail. Let's get right into it. The specs of the shoe are as follows. The weight of the shoe is 7.4 ounces, give or take the sizing. It is a neutral shoe made for trail and running. It has a 4 millimeter drop and it runs $115 on NewBalance.com. Now. With that said, we will now jump to the outsole. Of course, the New Balance Minimus Trail is famous for the Vibram outsole. It's incredibly rugged. It's a high abrasion rubber, just like most shoes use. There's just more of it. On the sides here, we have a soft midsole foam that runs along the outside of the shoe. Now if you've never worn a Minimus before, the beauty is on the inside. There's no sock liner in here. As you can see it is just it is just the midsole and outsole. There is nothing between you and the ground. On the top of the shoe we have a nice flexible upper. In fact the whole shoe is incredibly flexible. Everything about it conforms to the foot, including the upper. So it's a very sock-like fit up top. They have a midsole sort of strap that, that makes sure there's no unneeded movements when you're wearing the shoe. And then a little weld on here that I don't remember from the original Minimus that so far has kept some moisture off the front of my toe. Now there's a little more straps on the back here that kind of keep help keep the form of the shoe, but it's not rigid. Nothing about this shoe is rigid, and that's why I love it so much. So that's the long and short of it. That is this shoe. So the reason why I love this shoe so much is first the performance fit. I know I've said that about the Atta Zero Boston Boost before, but this shoe rivals that shoe in its performance fit it 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 conforms to your foot like like any other it surpasses most the reason why i love this shoe now getting into my review is that flexibility i am a four foot striker and as you can see right there that 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 sort of flexibility is is hard to find when my foot hits the ground you know, the, sh the, the foot flexes with it. With a lot of other shoes, you get a, a sort of midfoot rigidity that connects the front and the back of the shoe, and it makes it feel really clunky, really cl like there's no flex. This thing has a ton of it. It has, has more than, than, than just about any other. This shoe is made for road. It's made for trail. I've taken it on every single surface, and... Unlike most shoes that run out, you know, 500 miles, this shoe will go 700 to 800 miles, no matter what version you're wearing. I know people have had a lot of problems with the latest version because some of these welds come apart. I even had that problem. But even despite that, I can still take the, the shoe uh, 
well beyond the life of other shoes that I own. So, so just to recap, the reason why I love this shoe so much is first the performance fit mixed with the flexibility and then the durability of the outsole. It toughens up your feet unlike others that are trying to manage risk for you by putting more cushion than you really need into the midsole of the shoe. Try going on a 20 mile run in this thing through the mountains. You'll wa you won't want anything else. Yeah, it can be tough to run high volume in a minimal shoe, but in the end you're strengthening yourself and you're not wearing a shoe that might have poor running mechanics built into it. And we know that these shoes exist and they are everywhere. This is a shoe that works well with proper running mechanics. This is one of the few shoes in my life where people are repeatedly asking where it went and what happened to it. And now we can say that it's back. So don't waste time. Get on newbalance.com and grab a couple pairs because I have no idea how long this shoe is going to be around. You only get so many favors in the, the running shoe world. So uh, yeah, I ran in the snow in it yesterday. It didn't take on any water at all in the snow for 15 miles. It didn't take on any water. It's a good sign. What else do I have to say about this shoe? I know I'm missing something. Every Vibram outsole that I've ever run on from just the five fingers to the Minimus has lasted forever. I still have my five fingers. Like, I, you can still see the ridges. I bought these things in 2010. In 2010. Granted, I don't run on them like I do other shoes, but still, this is the same sort of technology, and it's going for 700, 800 miles. It's crazy. It's crazy to me. And God knows we don't want to buy a pair of shoes once a month. So. so, But it seems to me that the people who hold on to the minimalist philosophy can't find a better shoe than this one they can't other than the super psycho like vibram five fingers runners i love you guys i love you guys but you're crazy i don't think it has to be said but as far as dislike to like to love it's a love that is my review of the New Balance Minimus 10v1 Trail. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If the Minimus Trail did you wrong in the past, give me a thumbs down. You know, I don't care. Um, I hope things are going well for you. Uh, 2017, we're now January. What, a third of the way through January? 2017. So, keep up the good work. And as always... Time not important, only life important.